Welcome to Lecture 1, Principles of Macroeconomics. My name is Professor Nils Alakans. I'm from the University of Melbourne, where I'm the Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Business and Economics. I'm also a Professor of Macroeconomics. In our first lecture, what I'm going to do is describe for you the discipline of macroeconomics, explain a little bit about economics itself and how macroeconomics fits into the broader uh, discipline of economics, talk a little bit about the methodology of macroeconomics, and then describe for you some of the main themes that macroeconomists look at, uh, which will also be the main themes that we will cover in, uh, in our course. So macroeconomics is the study of the aggregate economy. It deals with big economic issues, issues involving national output, the rates of inflation and unemployment, monetary and fiscal policies, international trade, exchange rates, the business cycle, economic growth, and so on. These are issues of first order importance, issues that dominate the news and politics, issues that decide the fate of governments, issues that have very real effects on the economic welfare of virtually every person on the planet every single moment of the day. The importance of macroeconomics cannot be overstated. Understanding the world of the 21st century and the forces that are shaping that world requires an understanding of macroeconomics. Now, Macroeconomics is a comparatively young discipline in its modern guise, it dates back to 1936 and the publication of John Maynard Keynes' famous book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. That book, published during the greatest economic cataclysm of the 20th century, the Great Depression, revolutionised thinking about the aggregate economy. It demonstrated that a different set of tools to those usually employed by economists was needed to understand events like the Great Depression, and also to recommend to government policies that might avoid future catastrophic breakdowns in the workings of the macroeconomy. Since then, of course, both the world and macroeconomics have steadily evolved. We now face macroeconomic problems that were simply not relevant at the time of Keynes. We have, for example, passed through the 20 years of the Great Inflation, the name given to the decades of the 1970s and 1980s, where once again reality served up a set of circumstances, this time a sustained period of what's called double-digit inflation, that required refinement of the economist's toolkit. And today, topics such as globalisation and the rise of new economic powers like China and India, the IT revolution, and of course the global financial crisis continue to pose challenges for macroeconomists and policy makers alike. This course provides an introduction to modern macroeconomics for those beginning their study of economics. It does not attempt to provide an encyclopedic treatment of the discipline. Instead, my approach will be to emphasise some of the key ideas that have shaped modern thinking about macroeconomics and to present those ideas in as intuitive way as is possible. Throughout the course, I will encourage you to think like an economist by providing examples from recent economic history to show how macroeconomics can aid in the understanding of important real-world events. Too often, in my view, macroeconomics is presented as a series of disputes between scholars. And certainly, disputes among macroeconomists occur and the arguments and subsequent debate are an important means by which the discipline moves forward. But it is also wrong to suggest that there is not a great deal of common ground amongst macroeconomists. In essence, ideas about the workings of the economy that have proven their usefulness over the years. And it is these ideas that form the core of this course. As generations of macroeconomic students will attest, Ours is a complex and challenging discipline. It requires proficiency in an extraordinary wide range of skills. And Keynes himself, somewhat archaically now, once said, the master economist must possess a rare combination of gifts. He must reach a high standard in several different directions 
and must combine talents not often found together. He must be a mathematician, historian, statesman, philosopher in some degree. He must understand symbols and speak in words. He must contemplate the particular in terms of the general and touch abstract and concrete in the same flight of thought. He must study the present in the light of the past for the purposes of the future. No part of man's nature or his institutions must lie entirely outside his regard. He must be purposeful and disinterested in a simultaneous mood, as aloof and incorruptible as an artist, yet sometimes as near the earth as a politician. A few of us can live up to these high standards. Yet the subject matter of macroeconomics is of such importance, dealing as it does with fundamental questions of what determines people's living standards and what governments can do to raise those standards, that we are obliged to try. In this course, you will begin your study of the present in light of the past for the purposes of the future. I wish you every success.